Welcome to VS Developer Job Hive. Today's topic is SQL injection. It falls under security category. What is a SQL injection? As you read, SQL is the structured query language like that is related to your database. The data that is residing in a database can be injected and stolen. Right? So what do we mean by that? So you have a database, you have a table, and you have that table has uh, data. Right? So the table has columns, and the data is stored in rows. Now, you might be fetching for one particular record by giving an ID. Let's say, okay, what is the uh, you know uh, what are the employee details uh, holding this particular ID? Possible, right? So you want to uh, get one particular employee's details given his employee ID, or you would want to get one customer's um, you know spending details or credit card information uh, as you are an authorized user and fetch those particular details like that particular record. How do you do it? So you might not have direct access to the SQL uh, query language itself, but you would have some interface, uh, typically a web interface or a client application. So from there, uh, you could go and fetch those details with the uh, given ID or some other uh, key parameter. Now, what is it about SQL database and uh, how would they be projected outside of your uh, enterprise? So you have a database, right? So you have a database instance and you have a database created and then you have tables created in that. Wow, how is that exposed without somebody knowing it? So they can't access it. Yes. So typically what happens is you forget the standard ports and keeping them open. Right? You don't you forget to close them. You forget to restrict them, I meant to say. So you forget to restrict the uh, IP addresses, so you forget to restrict the uh, port numbers. So therefore, what happens is the malicious users, like the uh, hackers, can access your information. Usually, what happens when you have a database and the database uh, data is stolen? That is your usually your personal identifiable information, PII. Technically, we call it PII information, which is a common word. Uh, so, your anything related to your personal information is called PII. So, including uh, you know, uh, your credit card information, your SSN number, or your Aadhaar number, or your, um, you know, sometimes telephone number is also a private information. And your medical records, if it is health industry, so they're all your personal, personally identifiable information. So all the data, where does it reside? It resides in the database. So even that data is stolen, it's gone. Your privacy is gone. So your privacy is at stake. So therefore, it is very important to protect your data inside your database. How do we do that? So by restricting the port numbers, by restricting the IP addresses, that is the only whitelist uh, particular IP addresses which can query the database. That, Or if it's completely consumer based, so then you will have set of policies to whom to allow what data. That is all on the perimeter side. Okay? Now, what if your core application that is running as a vulnerability. Right? So you have restricted all the IP addresses, port numbers, so only the authorized users uh, can access the data. Well, good enough. So you have minimized your perimeter intrusion. If your program that is actually working for you to fetch the detail is faulty, is malicious, is vulnerable, then what do you do? <laughs> no one can save you. Right? So therefore, it is important to write a secure program when you're dealing with database. Let's see, let's dive in and see uh, how a program can be written um, you know, that could be vulnerable. And now if you see, these are the port numbers that we talked about. They're standard port numbers. MS equal server, Oracle, S5021, IBM DB2, H523, MySQL, S3306. And so this is your PIR. So much of importance given to your PII, the countries, federal governments have a particular compliance around it. So if you are a financial institution, if you are a health organization, you should be compliant to those standards. So if you are not compliant, you know, no mercy, you will be out of the business. So therefore, protecting the end user data 
the PII is the essential and you must uh, secure it. Now, securing, again, as we have discussed, happens the perimeter side and in your application as well. So, how do you secure, uh, how do you write secure programs in your application so that your data is safe? Let's look into that today. Right, uh, let's dive into the code. So, here, a little bit of background about uh, what we are going to do. So, as we have seen, SQL injection is about uh, databases. And now, on the left hand side of the screen, so you have a SQL Server Management Studio client where I have connected to a database, ESDFN SQL Server .database.net, which is hosted on uh, Azure SQL Server. So, now I have created a table uh, called DBO. Uh, customers in which uh, I have uh, four records. So these four records have six columns, uh, ID, last name, first name, address, city, and credit card. Now here the intention is uh, this personal information, that is uh, PII, is uh, stored in the database. Now if you are writing an application to fetch the records from this table, right, how, how could that be? That is on your right hand side. So if you see on the right hand side, uh, it's a uh, Java application which connects to the database and um, you know, uh, fetches a particular uh, row corresponding to given ID. ID. Okay. So let's look at that. So my application properties, let's look at application properties. So I have the URL which is which gives the, uh, you know, connects to the uh, my database. So this is the JWC call and SQL server, the DSN. And I have the username and password, right? And then uh, here is the uh, schema like a, a query which inserts a row into the table. So since I have already inserted this, I would just want to change the credit card number to two and I would want to change all these to uh, four. Yeah, uh, okay, looks like we don't have uh, this table. So anyway, I will change it. Now, so what do you have here? You have, you have set the logger and then inside the main, so you read the application dot property. So the application property dot properties as I've shown you, it reads the URL and credentials to connect to the database. Now here with the help of driver manager, we are getting connection to the database. Now once the connection is uh, successful, we are inserting a row into it. Well, so we insert the row that is defined in the insert row dot SQL and then you are collecting an ID. So here for the demonstration purpose, I have uh, hard coded it to fetch the 11. Well, now the next execute query is very straightforward. So select credit card from customer where personal ID is equal to the given ID. Right? So if it is 11, so the second row is supposed to come back to me and display. Well, so this is about the application. It's fair, so it's pretty straightforward. Right? Uh, now let's run it and see uh, what comes out as an output work. Well, so it, uh, so it read the properties, it connected to the database, and then it inserted a row into the table, and then 3, 4, 5, 6 is the uh, second row has been displayed back. Good, right? So it's a fair application. Now, uh, how could this be vulnerable? You might ask, right? So, <laughs> is this a vulnerable application? Yes, it is a vulnerable application because you're not validating the input at all. You are directly taking the input from the user and then directly pass it on to your SQL query. This could be dangerous. Yes, this could be dangerous. Majority of the uh, stories that you hear, you know, all these credit card information has been stolen. Uh, they do happen because of uh, programming fault as well. And majorly because of the programming fault. And then the next is your the perimeter security configuration. They all come into the picture. Now, we as the developers could be focusing on the programming fault, how uh, a vulnerable code uh, can exploit the data. So now uh, you see, fair. Now what I do instead of giving 11, right? What is um, in addition to giving 11, I cheat the system. Say this. This is my input now. We want to run and see. Yeah, before uh, you know, I want to I explain. Uh, let let's run it and see. Ah, what happened? <laughs> right. So you have only uh, you have asked for eleven. You are supposed to get it for eleven, and then this condition you have appended it to one equal to one, and then you got everybody else credit card information. Magic surprise, but this 
we don't want this kind of magic to happen because of our program right uh, we want a magic to happen because of a great algorithm or a complex algorithm solution not <laughs> by exploiting uh, you know the code that we have because so we do write it we as developers let's focus on writing a secure code better code all the time so what is the fault here right so you have not validated the input so how would you validate yes so and whenever you before pass it on to the sql query you always make sure that your intended number range is given to you there are no regular expressions in the input there are no special characters in the input uh, uh, there are no expressions like 1 equal to 1 right or uh, the arithmetic expressions in your statement so you would go ahead and write uh, validating the user input and then you pass it on to your query Th thereby you can restrict so if you say um, this 11 or 1 is equal to 1 is validated here and then your program throws an error saying that oh yeah this user id is not found or the input is invalid so we could write that validation error response before we actually run the query well so this is how you can exploit a sql injection uh, and then uh, by validating the user input you would actually uh, save lots of private data and thereby you will be called as a, a secure program which is good, right? So we should uh, be secure programmers, irrespective of you are a Java programmer, PHP, Python, C++, C, you know, any language programmer, you should be a secure programmer. It's, it's a basic thing to, to uh, be. So with that, so I hope uh, you have got the knowledge of what is a SQL injection, why do they happen, how do they happen, and how do you typically write a program uh, which has a malicious code, not by intention, but, but by lack of awareness, lack of knowledge. And now, how do you solve it? How do you validate every user input before you pass them to query? That is the solution. That is to not to allow any attack into your system. So with that, uh, we call it uh, a day for SQL injection video series. Thank you for watching.